Welcome back chemistry students. So just as a warm up, go ahead and uh, pause the video and practice here just to see what you get as the electron and the molecular geometries for these two molecules. Last chance to pause. Okay, so for these two molecules, CH4 was actually shown earlier. CH4 would have a steric number of four. That would mean that it's tetrahedral. H2CO, the two H's would be bonded to the carbon with single bonds, and the oxygen would be bonded to the carbon with a double bond. That means there would be three bonded atoms around the carbon, which means that would have a steric number of three and it would be trigonal planar, okay? So again, We've got linear, trigonal planar, tetrahedral, trigonal bipyramidal, and octahedral as our electron geometries for these steric numbers of two, three, four, five, and six. When we see lone pairs on molecules, one of the unique things about having those lone pairs is not only are they going to prevent us from seeing an atom in that position and change the molecular shape that we can see for where the atoms are, but they're also gonna have a slightly greater repulsion on the bonds than regular bonds would have had. And so in a molecule with a lone pair of electrons, that lone pair will change the molecular shape, but it will also change the bond angle a little bit. So in the case of sulfur dioxide, which is kind of shown here, we would normally predict for a steric number of three, we would say that's about 120 degrees. Because of the lone pair on the sulfur, the lone pair takes up a little bit more space because the lone pair takes up a little bit more space than a bond, it's more free to expand where it, it, it is around the atom, around the molecule. It has the greatest expansion or greatest repulsion. And so a lone pair against a lone pair is going to be the strongest repulsion, repulsion. A lone pair pushing against a bonding pair is going to be kind of in the between. And a bonding pair against another bonding pair is going to be the least repulsion. So in this image, we see the two blue arrows on the two sides. These are trying to show that the lone pair of electrons is pushing on these bonds a little bit more than normal. So 120 degrees is what we would predict, but this bond angle is actually more like 118 degrees or so, okay? In the case where you happen to have multiple bonds, multiple bonds will be a little bit greater in terms of their repulsion than a single bond would be. But again, they're not gonna be as strong of a repulsion as the lone pair would be. So if we go back to our example with H2CO, and we were trying to predict bond angles here, we would predict around that carbon, we would predict 120 degrees for all of those, but the C double O bond, that double bond is going to have slightly greater repulsion on the two hydrogens. And so reality, the HCH bond angle is also probably going to be more like, say, 119 degrees. So again, it's still about 120. It's not that huge of a difference. Um, in reality, most of these molecules where we see this, it doesn't have too big of a difference on how they behave or how they react with things, okay? But as we get into these tetrahedral electron geometries, so these were the steric numbers of four, we're going to start to have more possibilities for where those lone pairs can go. So for ammonia, NH3, here's the Lewis structure. We see there's a steric number of four because there's three bonded atoms and one lone pair. One of the things we can do is we can take that Lewis structure and we can draw it three-dimensionally using wedges and dashes. And the wedge, the full wedge, is supposed to show us atoms that are coming towards us. And the dashed wedge or the dashed line is supposed to show us atoms that are moving away from us. In the case of the lone pair and this hydrogen here, let me just highlight these just in case. In the case of this lone pair and this hydrogen here, these are in the plane of the paper or in the plane of the screen. This dashed line here is moving away from us and this wedge here is then coming towards us. So this hydrogen with the wedge, it's actually coming out of the paper. The hydrogen with the dashes is actually moving into the paper, okay? Um, this lone pair repels on these bonds a little bit more. So for a tetrahedral electron geometry, we would expect 109.5 degrees, but in ammonia, we actually see 107 degrees. So what do you think is gonna happen if we go to something like say water, where the water, the oxygen is gonna have two lone pairs? 
go ahead and pause the video and think about that. What's this gonna look like when we go to water? Last chance to pause. And when we go to water, we see that these two lone pairs of electrons here and here actually repel significantly more on the HOH bond, making this 104.5 degrees, okay? Now in terms of the shapes for these, so when there's a steric number of four, the electron geometry is tetrahedral, but because of that lone pair, because the nitrogen now is the top of the shape that we see, we actually call that molecular shape or molecular geometry, we call that trigonal pyramidal. In the case of the water, we call it bent, okay? And so steric number of four is tetrahedral, no lone pairs, it's still tetrahedral, one lone pair, it's trigonal pyramidal, two lone pairs, it's bent, okay? Um, if you went to three lone pairs, you would expect to have even greater repulsion, but then you'd only have two atoms bonded to each other. So that would still only be a linear shape. It doesn't matter. You're not gonna shift that bond to some other sort of a shape, okay? With a steric number of five, when we wanna think about where the lone pair would go, we see there's really two possibilities for where we can put the lone pair. We can put it in an equatorial position or we can put it in an axial position. Remember that the lone pair is gonna have a greater repulsion on the neighboring bonds. And so thinking about these two positions, which position is going to give this the minimal repulsion against 90 degree bonds? Hopefully you're thinking equatorial. In the equatorial position, the lone pair of electrons is only at 90 degrees from two bonds. Whereas in an axial position, that lone pair would be at 90 degrees from three bonds. So the equatorial lone pair gives us the lowest energy for that molecule, okay? Now, if you take that shape with that lone pair in the equatorial position, the electron geometry would be trigonal by pyramidal. But when you take that electron pair and the, the lone pair in the equatorial position, and you look at that molecule and you take that molecule and you twist it onto its side, you should see that it kind of looks like it might be a seesaw. And so that's how it got its name. So a steric number of five with one lone pair is called a seesaw, seesaw shape, okay? That lone pair is gonna repel on those two axial atoms a little bit more than normal. So those two axial atoms will not be ex exactly 180 degrees. They might be more like 181 and the equatorial atoms, the, uh, the two on the other side, um, those would probably still be pretty close to 120 degrees um, if, or maybe just a little bit less, like say 119. Again, a lot of these actual angles will depend on these specific atoms that are in the molecule and how big they, they are as well. Um, if you put a second lone pair on, Note that that's still going to go into an equatorial position. That's still going to be where it minimizes the repulsive forces, minimizes or has the lowest energy possible. With those two lone pairs, again, if we take that molecule and, and tilt it, then it looks like a T and that's how it got its name of a T-shaped molecular geometry, okay? If we go to three lone pairs, that third lone pair would still go into an equatorial position in an equatorial position, we would have those three atoms that are a straight line. All of the equatorial lone pairs would be repelling on those axial atoms the same amount. And so those axial atoms would actually be a perfectly 180 degrees, even though there's the three lone pairs around the equator then. Um, if we go to a steric number of six, so this would have been an octahedral base geometry for the electrons. Note that all the bond angles are 90 degrees here. If we replace one of those atoms with a lone pair, all of the positions are equivalent, so it doesn't really matter where it goes. We traditionally draw that lone pair as being on the bottom of the molecule because then that makes the rest of the molecule have a square base and a pyramidal structure. So we call that square pyramidal. Again, that lone pair is gonna be repel repelling the equatorial bonds by a little bit. And so it will not have a perfectly flat square base, but it's pretty close, okay? This is then where those bond angles are, will not be exactly 90 degrees with the square pyramidal. If we put another lone pair on, that lone pair is gonna to wanna to go to the opposite side of the first lone pair. Again, because lone pairs are slightly more repulsive. 
And so with those two lone pairs on opposite sides, now the shape we see is a perfect square. It is planar. It is perfectly planar because the lone pairs on the top and the bottom are repelling those equatorial atoms in, with equal amounts, okay? Um, in my other video, you may have seen me discuss the three lone pairs a little bit. We're not gonna worry about three lone pairs for this class, for an octahedral geometry, okay? For practice, go ahead and draw the Lewis structures for the thiocyanate anion, SCN minus, and for the nitrate, nitrite rather, anion and go through and de determine what the electron and the molecular geometries for these would be, okay? See you in class and in the discussion boards.